Please be seated. Even in the joy of the resurrection, we do not forget the anguish of our sins. We pray together in confession and lament. Pray with me. Risen one, we confess our silence amid the persecution of others. Silence that is often compiled with oppression and brought harm. We can do eradicate poverty, hunger, and homelessness. Help us to hear your voice above all others. Teach us now to care of our neighbor, feed the hungry, and clothe and care for those in need. For as we do these things unto one another, we do them unto you. As we pray the prayer of confession, we also know the Lord pardons our sins. In joy and resurrection, we claim the victory of Christ over the power of sin. God's rolled away the stone to reveal our salvation. We look inside the tomb, and where Jesus once lay lifeless, we find the gifts of God's grace and forgiveness. Go and tell the world, in Christ we are forgiven.
think uh, you know a little bit about Ness Easton. Do you like peanuts? Do you? Most of the time when you buy peanuts, you go and you just eat, eat the nut. But don't you, people don't see it, but peanuts come in a shell, right? And inside of that shell is a nut. And that particular shell covers and protects the nut. But the nut cannot see the air or the light of day or it's entombed in the stone. And Jesus was entombed in a, a grave, just like that nut was in the shell. And so what you do when you want to eat the nut, you break the shell and you take, take out the nut and it's released from its shell. And then it's able to make peanut butter out. Do you like peanut butter? <laughs> so do I. I think I eat a little bit more than uh, most people, but I really like it. But just like the nut, Jesus came out of a shell, and that shell was his body that had died. His spirit came out of that shell and is living and active. So we hope that you have a wonderful Easter and that uh, you can celebrate with your family. I hope there's a little bit of sweet things at your house that you're going to have at home and eat our Easter basket and your Easter dinner. So thanks for coming up here. God bless you.
and the sea was changed, new earth there seemed to be. I saw the holy city beside the tideless sea. The light of God was on its streets, the gates were open.
This little boy knows his mom and said, Mom, is that a big bird? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, everybody smiled as uh, he wondered about who this man was. When we come to Easter, you can talk about Easter with just one word. What would be some of those words? Just a single word. Joy. Hope. Forgiveness. Peace. Victory. You could use perhaps two words to talk about Easter. You would talk about new life. Empty tomb. Good news. You could use a few words and a phrase to describe Easter. A single sequence of words. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Would you say that with me? He is risen. He is risen indeed. You find in that phrase the story of Easter. He is risen. We look around and we see the decorations, we, we sing this, the hymns, we proclaim something that the Bible talks about, an empty tomb. In an empty tomb we find hope and we find new life. We find good news. If you've spent any time at all watching the news, you say the world needs good news. It's been a painful year to see the wars and the destruction and the life that's been taken away in this year. Many people say, I just wish you would stop. We don't need a new normal. We need new life. We need new hope. When Jesus faced the cross, he was mocked by soldiers beaten, nailed to the cross. It looked like it was over, but his body was laid in the tomb. All the members of hell were rejoicing because those on the dark side thought finally this Jesus had been silenced and he'd been defeated. But God didn't panic. He didn't say the plan had failed. The judge of all heavens and earth said, overrule. Jesus was dead, but he came back to life. We can see the forces of darkness in the world, but there's also new life in the world. We can see that death is not the end, there's something beyond death, new life. That's what we celebrate. It's not hard to believe that Jesus was unjustly tried and convicted. It was not hard to believe that Jesus was given the death penalty and sentenced to death. It was not hard to believe that Jesus died upon the cross because this world is full of injustice. But the rest of the story is quite amazing. It takes faith to believe that even in death there's new life, hope, the hope of forgiveness, the hope of peace, the hope of assurance, the hope of heaven. Those things are hard to believe in this world of destruction and death. We talk about unbelievable promises. The first Easter, Christ followers were not celebrating. Their hopes have been dashed. Jesus had been put in the grave. Their leader was gone forever. But Jesus had made some claims that came back to their minds later on. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and life. He said, you can have life and you can have it abundantly. Jesus made these promises to his people before his death. These were tremendous ideas no one had heard anyone say before. They were unique to this Jesus, this leader. He was claiming something that no one else had said. That sin and death were not the end, that there would be new life. There would some, be something to hope for in the future. We read Mark 8 31 and began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. This is what he promised. 
When someone promises you something, you get excited and you think it's wonderful. But many promises that others give, you wait to see, is it really true? Will it come to pass, this promise that this person has made? Some people break their promises. And they never intend to keep their promises. Some people make promises they want to keep, but have no ability to keep this promise they made. So we all live with some disappointment about broken promises. But Jesus made promises. Was it going to be broken promises, or was there something unique about what he said that was going to make a difference? Could he be believed in what he said? He made them make unimaginable promises. He said he was going to die and come back in three days. That's never happened in history before, so I'm claiming that. Did it really happen? That's the story of Easter, as we're here to celebrate. You can make promises, but can you keep your promises? That's a very fundamental thing as we come together. They were hard to believe the things that he said. Jesus believed their leader. We go back to that first Easter Sunday. It was early in the morning, it was gone. The sun had not finally fully risen, and it looked like a, a, a dark gray sky. A few of the followers that were loyal to Jesus remained committed to him, even though he had been put to death. The women walked about a half hour to the tomb. Their conversations were subdued because of the feelings of loss and grief that they had had because of their leader being put to death. It was a quiet time as they walked to the tomb. They were going to see their beloved Jesus in a lifeless body. The women stared off into the distance and saw the crosses that filled the hill called the skull. Nobody had yet removed the crosses. They paused for a moment and remembered the horror of Friday. It was on these crosses that Jesus had breathed his last breath. There was no question that Jesus was dead. The soldiers knew it. The Romans knew it. The Jews knew it. It was finished. Jesus was laid to rest. A large rock had been rolled in front of the tomb that held the body of Jesus and guards were watching over the grave. It seemed hard to believe that Jesus would come back to life. But we celebrate Jesus' promises. And in an instant, there was something that changed. Right in front of the tomb, the stone rolled away, the two women trembled as they saw the presence of an angel. The tomb was empty. Death did not have the final victory. It was time to rewind the whole story think about it, wonder what was going on, was this really happening? Instead of despair, was there a reason to hope, as there was this resurrection going on? Luke 24 says, remember how he told you that he was still in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified on the third day and rise again. And the scripture says, and they remembered his words. And they remembered his words. It all came back, they remembered his words. The tomb was empty. Perhaps it was true. Perhaps the promises were real. There was something about it that seemed very mysterious. His words were not empty. They were meaningful. Where is this Jesus? It's an understandable question that anyone should have and would have. Is there any truth to this story? Thomas wondered, did Jesus really come back to life? He said, except I see his hands and the print of the nails, I will not believe. And then Jesus appeared to him and said, reach your finger into the, my side. 
feel my hands and believe. The angel said, he's not here, he's risen. There's so much of me that believes in that. Because when I laid my mother to rest, or I laid my father to rest, or I laid my grandparents to rest, there's something in me that wants to believe that they came back to life. That death wasn't the end, that the spirit is living on. So even in my human experience, even with my friends and my loved ones, I want to believe that they came back to life. That there is life beyond death. So yes, I want to believe the story of Jesus. That death is at the end, that there's life. New life. That transforms us into some way of experience that we don't fully understand. But our loved ones are still living. And that we'll see them again. The cross was empty. The tomb was empty. The grave clothes were empty. And Jesus was nowhere to be found. Was it just wishful thinking? Or did something really happen? And then there was his voice, greetings. The scripture says that they remembered at that point when there was the words of greeting, they remembered all that he said, that he was going to come back to life three days later. They remembered all of it. It was a wonderful, joyous memory that they encountered. So what do we say? One, two, three, I'm back. One, two, three, I'm back. Jesus is back. They remembered his words and that what he had said was coming true right before them. In September, my wife and I, Carol, were in Israel. We had the great joyous time of going to the place where Jesus was put to death. Where his body was laid on the ground and where he was put in the tomb. We were there. And even now, as Christians celebrate all over the world and even in Israel, they go back to the place to see the empty tomb. What a wonderful experience it is to actually be in the Holy Land. And the many worshipers that come there. And what do they do? They bow down. They bow down at the point and place where Jesus' cross was laid, and they bow down and worship Him. It's very moving to see that. I had the same experience of just wanting to kneel down and worship the Lord Jesus. As I knew He was put on this tomb, but He didn't stay in the grave. The rock was rolled away. The body was gone. Jesus was not there anymore. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Jesus, James, came to the tomb early on Sunday. There was this rock that separated them from being in the presence of the body of Jesus. But it was rolled away. Death did not have the final victory. When they arrived, they, their minds quickly came to the conclusion that his body had been stolen. The angel said, he's not here, he's risen. So they heard the voice of Jesus and they became more full of hope. Their fear was replaced with joy. And they ran to tell the disciples. They ran. The scripture says, they were full of excitement. There was such great excitement in their hearts and in their lives. They went back to tell the disciples. They went back to tell those that knew Jesus and had spent the most time with him. And here we read the story that John and Peter ran to the tomb. When they got there, they were out of breath. John did not go in to the grave. He was afraid and worried. So Peter, the old one, went in. There was nothing there. The grave was empty. They didn't understand it all. Just like we don't understand it all. Perhaps they never did understand it all. Perhaps they, maybe we will never understand it all. But they believe that he was alive. I would say, in my own experience, I don't understand it all. 
that the Spirit is alive, and that I will see them again, just like they saw Jesus again. This is why I believe in the resurrection, because I believe that I will see my family members again. Jesus said the promise he made is that I will rise again on the third day. So we ask these questions as we come to the conclusion of this sermon. What are the stones in your life? The things that are rolled in front of your life? The ones that are big or maybe small? Our Father is looking at you right now. He sees the rubble, the ruin that you're going through, and He wants to take away the solid stones in your life. The solid stone of despair, the stone of remorse, the boulder of bondage, He wants to roll them away in your life. What are those stones that you're dealing with? Can you trust in the great promises of God, the promises that were made to Jesus, about Jesus, that the stone would be rolled away and that there would be a new life and a new future? T -t Today we celebrate the stone has been rolled away for you and me. Your stones can be rolled away. Those things that you hold you back in your life. Jesus forgave you. God accepts you. The stone has been rolled away and you have been given the grace of God. The Savior has chosen to love you and that is the story of why Jesus came back to life. He came out of the tomb. You can have your stones rolled away you can live differently because of the proclamation of the scriptures of the Word of God. As we turn to the affirmation of faith, let's share together this wonderful affirmation. Let's stand together. I believe in God, the Father, the Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus, and in Jesus Christ, Christ, His only Son, Son our Lord. Who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born in the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and buried. He descended into hell, and the third day he rose again from the dead. He descended into heaven, sitting to the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the wicked and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins. Resurrection of the body, and the life of the rest.
share together an invitation to the Sabbath show. How good it is to celebrate a new life this Easter season. To the call to follow Jesus in this new life that may be on our hearts. We are invited now to answer this call. He rose to bring us along the road of salvation. He calls us here saying, Come and follow me. By the Spirit we are led into a new season, into a new beginning with Christ. Let us step into joy, the joy of following Jesus. Hallelujah, for the call of Jesus is the power of life everlasting. In Presbyterian tradition, no one is turned away from the Lord's table. All often says to the church, as often as you eat bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts.
Please join me in prayer. God of grace, we give you thanks for the peace of redemption that we have shared in the body and blood of ourselves, of our Savior. As you have nourished us with your love, let our lives proclaim your great love to the world through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns.
Easter Sunday. He is risen. He is risen indeed. of God which passes all understanding. Keep your, your hearts, hearts and minds in the knowledge of the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit remain with you always.